Hi, my name is Shelly of ThatGirlShelly.com and I wanted to come on really quickly to show you how you can create great graphics for your post on your social media platforms using a free program. Um, it's called Canva. And so here I'm already at the site, canva.com. It's free to sign on for their basic um, package. And their basic package um, is really all that you need when you're first starting out. So let's start. I'm going to click on the More tab here. Just so you can see the types of layouts that they have already established. So under social media posts, they have it where you can make a Twitter post, just the generic social media, Pinterest graphic, a Facebook post, a Tumblr graphic, Instagram post. So I'm going to start with just the Facebook post. So I'm going to click on that. What Canva does is it already starts you off with basic templates here over to the side. So if you click on any one of those, it'll actually put it into the main um, design board. So say for instance, you like giving inspiration and so you like to, to post inspirational quotes on Facebook. Then I wanna click on this one since this one was set up to be a quote. Um, what I can say is this, when you're using Canva, it's very easy since they have these templates already set up to just go in and start typing um, using the font that they already have established. What I will suggest though is that even when you're using their templates as the baseline, you're going to want to make sure that you use fonts on, the, on each of the posts that you create that are very similar to your brand fonts. So for instance, if you have a... Um, sans serif font for your a, a thin sans serif font as one of your fonts then you might want to use open sans light you want to make sure that it, it's kind of close um, to your brand fonts if your brand font is not actually listed in one of the fonts that they um, provide with the free program now as you get more familiar and comfortable with Canva they do allow for you to install upload your own fonts which is even which will make it better because then you know you're using your exact fonts now this is um, part of their package which is called Canva for work and with that that's the $12 per month um, subscription based program that allows you then to upload your own fonts but with the free just make sure that your fonts are very close to the fonts that you have as your brand fonts so for me, if I'm creating this graphic for me, um, one of my fonts is um, a handwritten font. And if I had to compare it with one of the fonts here on Canva, it would be really close to this one. Um, so I would pick that. I'm just bringing this in because I like to be more stacked. Um, if I were using this quote, this is the font that I would use for that more than likely. Um, let's say that my brand colors are black and hot pink, in which case I would then want to change this background color to a black. So you can go down here. Um, I can click on this black and then that is that, right? Um, say also with my hot pink, so it's not my main color, but it is one of my accent colors in this example. Um, then I would go to this color and notice that hot pink is not one of the ones that's here. But I can click on this plus sign and I can either move the wheel to a hot pink or if I actually knew the hex number for my particular um, shade of pink, I can actually put that there. Um, since hot pink is really not my color, I really don't have a, a hex number for a hot pink that I want to use. So I'm just going to find one that I like. So that's fine. And for me, for colors like that, I like to use them for accents. So I'd also probably use it down here for the author's name. Um, now, for things like body type. So here, the font that's going to be closest to my second font. So I have a handwritten font. I also have a sans serif font that is really close to Open Sans. So I'm going to go there. I'm going to find that. And that's fine. I'm going to put that there. So now these fonts are all very similar to my brand fonts. Um, the other thing, with things like quotes, so even though I just now told you that you want to want to make sure that you use your brand fonts in the copy or whatever you, you put on the page, you don't have to do that with things like quotes or apostrophes or things like that. And so I don't, my brand, my brand font for the quote would look like that. And it's like blah to me. So what I like to use for fonts is Lustria. I like that. I think those are cute. 
So I would use that as the quote. And there you are. You have a, a quick um, graphic that you can put on to Facebook. Now, let's say you that looks plain to you. You wanted it to be a little bit fancier. fancier. You can go down here to background. And say you like this checkered type background. If you pop that in there, then now you have that in the back. Notice though now it's not your brand color. So what you do is you'd click on it, go to the color circle, make it black again. And now you have it back to where it was. Um, other things that you can do with Canva, you can do the background. So there are all different types of backgrounds that I could play with. And once you click it, it puts it into the um, artboard. Play with different kind. But say I like photography. I, I actually want a picture back there. If that's the case, then you'd want to go back to elements and they have some free photos. So you'd want to check those out first. And let's see, scrolling down my, the free photos. Um, let's see if anything jumps out to me. Say that I really like this farmhouse one, this. So let me get rid of this background. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull a corner out so I can proportionally stretch out this farmhouse. And I am going to now move it up so I can actually see the, the farmhouse in it. All right. So now it's that. What I then have to do. OK, so let's do I, I can do this one of two ways. Say that I like the way that the photo sits in the back of this picture. Um, but now I'm just having problems reading my font. You can do it two different ways to make it so that your font is readable. The first way is by actually adding a shape. So I can bring in a nice rectangle here. I'm gonna send it all the way back, right? So all of my elements are now on there. But the whole reason why I chose the photo in the first place is because I actually wanted to see it, right? I wanna be able to read my fonts, but I also wanna see the photo. So what you can do here is if you click this arrow down and go to transparency, I can fade out that box a little bit. I can make it the best of both by having it so that my font is readable, but that I still can see my picture peeping through, right? So that can be one version of the design where I'm playing, where I'm actually using a photo in a smart way, but I'm actually making it so that I can see Right, make the transparency a little bit, bump it a little bit more. But I can actually see, read my quote, and I can actually see the photo on the back. Another way would be to make a little bit of shift. So let me, if like you click here, you can copy that exact artboard down into another panel. So if I'm here, I'm going to take away this box. Let's delete that. I'm going to move everything up. And let's move it all up. Let's give it some breathing room with the photo. This photo has like a lot of um, blank space. So it actually allows me to play within that space and not affect the picture so much. All those clouds are giving me more space. And then what I can do is, because I already said that black was one of my colors, now since it's a lighter background, I'm just gonna come in and change all of these elements to black. So that way now I still can read the quote, I still can see the picture. Um, so it kind of gives you two ways of how you want to tackle it. If this one is gray, if I wanted to make that black, same thing, I just changed that to the black. Um, but it gives you an option of how you want to play with your type on the actual picture. The other thing that you can do with Canva is that you can add filters, um, very similar to the filters that you create in Instagram, to your actual photos here. So if I wanted to kind of have this rugged urban look, then I might think about using like Cali or let's see, using retro selfie, that type of look. I really like Cali, so I think I'm going to go back to Cali. There. Um, other things that you should do with your photos. So knowing both of those photos, I have the quote there, I have the author there, everything looks great, right? But I don't have my website there or my logo there. Things where people would know that, hey, you know, Shelly created this graphic. 
So what you could either do is that if you have your logo already uploaded into your Canva here, which I don't have my exact logo in, I could either upload it in or see for me, I have a version of my logo here. Let's bring this in, make it a little bit bigger. Notice it has the NU on it, which makes it not completely my logo. So I'm going to crop that out. You can use the crop tool. Also to crop things out. See, I'm gonna crop that out there. And now my logo is here. If I'm gonna put my logo here, I can either, let's see, so I can put the quotes there. I can put my logo up here, up at the top. Uh, it has this rustic feel. Maybe I might think about filtering my logo a bit. Maybe, let's see, making it black and white. If I don't want it to really be the main focus, I just kind of want it to be there. Um, and let's see, I like, if I'm not gonna have the quotes at the top, let's see. If I'm not gonna have the quotes at the top, then I would like to, I would, if this were my real graphic, I would create some kind of a balance. So I would get another set of quotes Use this little arrow around to turn it around there. And then I would put it here, give it a sort of balance. Um, so I would probably bring it down a little bit to something like that. Normally I don't bring my logo design into my pictures. I just don't when I'm doing quotes and stuff. Let's move all of this up. I don't normally bring my logo design in like that. I still brand it, but I brand it a little bit differently. And I'm about to show you another option that you have. Um, let's see. Let's move everything up. Um, here we go. Wait a minute. I didn't want to bring the picture up, but that's fine. Bringing that up. Let's bring Albert Einstein up. Let's make him a little bit smaller too. Let's see there. So I bring him up. The other thing, bring take the picture back down. So the other thing that I like to do is I actually like to bring it in as text. Well, I'm gonna click on add a little bit of body text. Let's move that down to about there. And then I'm just gonna type in that girlshelly.com. I'm just gonna have it at the bottom. So that way then it's there. They know that it came from me. Um, but I don't necessarily have to put my logo design in if I don't want to. Um, it'll still be traced back to me. So if somebody was sharing this around and they wanted to be like, oh, you know, who made that cool graphic? Then it'll still get back to me. Um, but that's the, I just, I just think it's like a, a great thing, especially since you know that quotes tend to get shared around. If you actually put your branding on it somewhere, it's, it will be a great thing. It doesn't have to be all the way up there either. It can fit down in a picture. Let's see, I can make it white and it can kind of go down here. Kind of out of the way, kind of with the picture. Um, if I said mm, it's down there, but I can't really see it that well, do the same thing. You're going to bring in a shape. Where did that shape go? Did I bring it in? Let's see. Okay, where did it go? Let's, let's bring it up here. I don't, I don't know where it went. Oh, here we go. All right, let's make it smaller because I see. Oh, because I'm still on background. I'm sorry. Okay, guys, so that was my fault. So I'm not going to be on background. I'm going to be on element shapes. And then I'm going to bring in the wall. I'm going to bring in a box here. I'm going to make it really, really small because all it's really going to hold is my um, website and it's going to be down at the bottom here I can make it really small I am going to send it back of course oops I'm going to send it back so I can see what I'm doing with it I am going to make it I can make it hot pink and change the transparency make it all the way down Maybe I wouldn't make it hot pink. If I want it to be seen, I'd make it the black. 
and then kind of make it make the transparency enough so that people can really read it doesn't have to be so the box doesn't have to be so big cuz like I'm saying it's just going to it's just going to be for my logo design and there so now maybe they can read a little bit better it's there there's at the bottom at center it um but it's still branded for me um other things that Canva allows you to do so let's make another copy of this say I did not want to use that picture so let's get rid of those backgrounds and say I actually wanted to use something that I uploaded myself so here is a stock photo that I uploaded already I'm gonna bring that here I'm going to it already went to the back and now I would work with if I'm bringing in stock photos, if you're bringing in stock photos, you're going to want to work with the photo. And so what you're bringing in is going to want to be balanced with your photo. Let's bring this down. Let's bring this down. Since this clipboard has like a, a slant to it, then what I would do is I would slant it here. So it can look like it was actually written on the clipboard. Slant it in there like that. Same thing with the author's name. His name needs to be slanted to fit on this clipboard. Here. And then just kind of move it up. If you still wanted the quotes with the stock photo, you can put it in there. Okay. We have to maneuver it a little bit if we're going to put those quotes in. So just a little bit of maneuvering. Maybe now I need to make this a little bit smaller. Let's try 100. Oops, 100. Just a little smaller. So now it's cute in there. Um, bring it over to the side a little bit. All right, bring Albert Einstein down a little bit. Now with my that, that girl Shelly. This is on a white canvas, right? So for the most part, the background of this photo is white. So I don't need this gray box anymore. What I can do is I can change my font to that black. Or I can change it to the hot pink and just kind of have it off to the side. Um, if I wanted it to be a part of the main board, then I could also then twirl it that way and then put it down here at the bottom. If I'm going to put it there, I normally don't put the W's in front of it. I just do that thatgirlshelly.com. Get rid of that here because it's not really an accent. I want it there, but it doesn't have to be the main focus. I would make it black. I would play with it more until it looked balanced a little bit more with everything else. And there you go. Now I have another graphic. See, I use the same quote, use different photos, different effects. Oh, that one did have a photo in the background. It could just have a regular color. Um, but you kind of get, you get three different feels so let's just make this a solid background in the back you get three different feels the same quote and so it gives you room to play around with how you want your um, graphics presented online but it also gives you a lot of opportunity to make great wonderful graphics for your post and you don't have to use a expensive program because like I said this is free so this was my quick quick tutorial on how to use Canva to create great posts for um, Facebook or for your social media platforms. Don't forget when you're finished with this, you're going to actually want to download it here and then you'd want to save it as a high quality ping if you're going to put it on your social media platforms. Again, my name is Shelly of That Girl Shelly and I hope that you found this tutorial helpful.